So now that you have a handle on uh, net operating income and calculating cap rate, remember cap rate is taking your net operating income and divided it by the purchase price, okay? What I'm now going to show you is called cash on cash return, right? And this actually is the more important of the two ratios or calculations, okay? The reason is, is cap rate is more reflective of the area. What is the area providing in a way of a return, reward, and risk, by the way? So cap rate represents risk and reward. Generally speaking, the higher the cap rate, the more risk is going to be. So in other words, you might not fully collect all those rents, for example. You might have more deferred maintenance. You might have more uh, tenant challenges, okay? Now, there are exceptions. There are areas of the, where in the U.S. or Canada where, where properties are so low priced, prices are so low, and the cap rates are genuinely higher, okay? And there might not be as much risk. It's just there's a, a higher rent to cost basis ratio, okay? We really don't manipulate cap rate. Cap rate just is what it is, okay? And each property, of course, has its own cap rate associated with the property. But it's, it's commensurate or relative to the area. Cash on cash return, on the other hand, is what we're going to talk about now, is something we as investors are far more interested in on an individual property basis. And we can manipulate cash on cash return. That's why it's so important. We can look at a property 12 different ways and come up with 12 different strategies to buy it and, and cash flow. So let's talk about cash on cash return, all right? So cash on cash literally means what you've got coming in versus what you've got going out in actual dollars, okay? Cash. So, uh, on the previous video, cap rate, NOI, net operating income, we cal I showed you how to calculate your net operating income, okay? And, how, and then you calculate your cap rate. We're going to talk, we're going to calculate the cash on cash return now. Here's how this works. Right, in the previous example, we had basically gross receipts of 12000 or, or basically contract rent. If you collected everything, you collect 12000 bucks. We had non-debt expenses of $4,000. So we're left with $8,000 to pay mortgage payments and pay property taxes and, and so forth, okay? So, uh, I'm sorry, um, income tax. So back to this, we got $8,000, all right? That's our, that's our uh, net operating income is eight. K eight thousand, and we we purchased the property for hundred thousand. Remember that. Well, let's say we only put in uh, twenty thousand, twenty percent. So we we have um, a down payment of twenty thousand, twenty k. In the real world, let's say you had this property and you you put down twenty percent, you financed eighty, and later on you put in a new roof, for example. Well, that would be a capital improvement and that capital improvement goes against your cost basis. You would add it to the total cost of the property. And if you pay cash for that, you would include that in your, your out-of-pocket out of cost, basically out-of-pocket investment, excuse me. But for the sake of this exercise, let's just assume your total out-of-pocket is 20000 okay? To calculate cash on cash return, you do include debt service, okay? So let's say your debt service on that property um, is... Let's say it's um, let's say it's seven thousand for the year, okay? So you got principal and interest payments of seven thousand. Well, you've got to take out. Let's let's that's a lot. Let's say um, let's say it's only uh, three thousand, okay? Principal and interest payments are three thousand dollars for the year. You would subtract a three thousand from the eight thousand which now gives you a cash return of 5000 that's your cash return 5000 the way you calculate cash on cash return is you take the 5000 in your pocket and divide it by the the money you put into the, the down payment which is 20000 5000 divided by 20000 is going to give you a 25% cash on cash return that's cash on cash return. Remember I told you a moment ago that we can manipulate this as investors on the individual properties. So in other words, we could put down more money, or we could put down less money, or we could have on the mortgage payment, you know, the, on the loan terms, we could have a longer term or a lower interest rate, things like that. So we can manipulate 
the cash on cash return. So if a property doesn't look like on the surface based on raw data that it might not work for us, we would we would modify things in our in our structure of the deal to improve or modify the cash on cash return. In this case, if I had a 25% cash on cash return, I'd take the deal. Even if the cap rate was lower than I generally like, let's say 8% lower than what I want is usually 10 or 12%. What really matters the most is cash on cash return. What I got coming in versus what I got going out. If that's 25%, I really don't even care what the cap rate is, okay? This is what matters the most, cash on cash return. And you take what your money after your debt service and all expenses in your pocket, divide that by what you put into the property up front, and that's your cash on cash return, okay? Now, you still got to pay uh, income tax on that, okay? This just includes debt service, but that's the big difference. Cap rate does not account for debt service, cash on cash return does. Cap rate you really don't manipulate too much, cash on cash return you do. Congratulations, now you got the two figured out, let's move on to the next subject. I'll see you on the next video, in the meantime just sit back, relax and get a glass of water, see you in a minute. Take care and God bless.